If someone is exposed to monkeypox virus, they typically several days later will develop what we call a viral prodrome where they may have a fever, body aches, um, and that may last for a few days and then progress to developing a, a rash on their body. That rash may be what we call localized in one part of the body, uh, for example, on the chest, on the face, or it may be more widespread across the body. In other words, on the face, chest, arms, hands, legs. Um, and that rash can then persist for several weeks and someone continues to be considered infectious until that rash is completely healed, which may take up to four weeks. The primary mode of transmission of monkeypox is through direct contact with a lesion that contains the virus or direct contact with body fluids that have the virus in it. So again, direct contact with uh, an, infect, an infected rash uh, or uh, fluid from that rash. It's also possible for the virus to be spread through contact with what we call contaminated fomites. Fomite is a word that includes uh, things like a bedspread or a bath towel or even clothing. If someone who's been infected with monkeypox um, sleeps on a bedspread or wears clothing and then that is not washed and an individual comes along and has contact with that, those contaminated fomites, that actually can lead to transmission of the virus to that, um, to that individual. There is the possibility that monkeypox can be spread through um, the respiratory route, but it's believed to be a very rare form of transmission. When someone is uh, suspected of having monkeypox, they may present to their physician or the emergency department with a new rash or uh, fever, viral prodrome illness. What the physician will do is they will take a swab of their rash. Uh, they'll vigorously collect a sample from one of the lesions or uh, the, the spots of the rash. And then they'll send that rash into a testing laboratory, including ours. We'll then perform what's called a, a PCR test. And many have become familiar with PCR tests over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. Those who should be tested for monkeypox, if you develop a new rash, and again, you've uh, either live or visited an area where there's monkeypox transmission, or if you've come in contact with an individual or groups uh, where there is known monkeypox circulation, if you've had contact with an animal from the continent of Africa uh, and develop a new rash, you should be tested for monkeypox. I think uh, one possibility that we need to be ready for is that monkeypox may be uh, may become a uh, sexually transmitted infection that we'll need to test for while we test for other more common well-known diseases like gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis. And so uh, the, the next weeks, the next month are really going to determine whether that is the case or whether we can um, stop the spread of this virus. So again, the next uh, two to four weeks is going to be really essential. The smallpox vaccine actually provided about 85% protection against monkeypox because they're members of the same virus uh, family. Now, uh, in today's uh, current world, people aren't receiving that smallpox vaccine because smallpox has been eradicated. So what we're seeing is a population level decline in the level of protective immunity that was really intended to target smallpox, but also help with prevention of spread of monkeypox. And that's one theory why we're now seeing this outbreak of monkeypox is because the level of immunity in the global population is slowly declining. As people get further and further out, from having received a smallpox vaccine. There are vaccines though that are available and being distributed that can help prevent 
both smallpox and monkeypox. Of course, smallpox has been eradicated, but the most common vaccine, at least here in the U.S., is what we call the Genios vaccine. It actually uses a strain of a virus that's part of the monkeypox family. That strain is called Vaccinia virus. And uh, that virus can generate an immune response that's protective against both smallpox and monkeypox. And that is what's being rolled out in, in many developing countries, including the US. And I think it will initially be used against targeted groups and populations, those who are most at risk, those who have been exposed, and then as more vaccine becomes available in the future, we may see broader availability and access to that vaccine. So I think it's important to emphasize that it's very unlikely that monkeypox will cause a pandemic to the scale of COVID-19 because the virus is different. It's spread in a different way. As I mentioned earlier, the primary mode of transmission of monkeypox is through direct contact with an infected lesion. Uh, we don't think that monkeypox is going to cause uh, millions and millions of infections like we saw with COVID-19 that's now resulted in more than 570 million cases worldwide. Uh, currently, we're at uh, 16,000 confirmed cases of monkeypox. Of course, it's only been kind of recognized during this outbreak over the last few months. People should be aware. They should especially uh, take precautions when ha having sex with a new partner uh, because that currently is appearing to be one of the uh, main sources of transmission uh, during this monkeypox outbreak. So that's an important thing to emphasize is that if an individual has a new sexual partner to um, take precautions and if you develop a new rash to be evaluated and request testing.